If American history could be captured in a single life, look no further than Jackie Robinson, the Hall of Famer who integrated Major League Baseball on April 15, 1947, wearing the number 42. Now, every April 15th, which is tomorrow, the MLB, along with millions of fans worldwide, celebrate Jackie Robinson Day. We spoke to Jackie Robinson's son, David Robinson, and the president of the Jackie Robinson Foundation about the American icon and why his legacy beyond baseball resonates today. It is a moment frozen in the annals of history. Jackie Robinson breaking baseball's long-held color line by stepping onto Ebbets Field in Brooklyn on April 15, 1947, becoming the first black American to play Major League Baseball in the 20th century. But it is the scope of his life, not just that moment, that truly encapsulates modern American history, the indignities black people suffered, but also the progress and promise of integration. It was a life that began in 1919 when Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born in post-Reconstruction Georgia under the horrors of Jim Crow. His grandmother was born a slave. His mother was a sharecropper. So he, we knew through his history, which was our family's history, which is our race's history. We got to sit down with David Robinson at the Jackie Robinson Museum in New York City, a space that chronicles his father's trailblazing achievements against the backdrop of U.S. history. My father was a man of, of few words and very strong actions, but he was very impactful in, in, a, in a very modest number of words. And it really, he, uh, I think we learned as much by his example as we did by what he said. David's recollections come as education is under threat. It is also why museums like this one could be one of the final frontiers for true accounts of our past. The museum is part of the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which was established in 1973 by Jackie's wife, Rachel, who last year turned 100 years young. The museum's president and CEO, Della Britton, wanted the exhibits to showcase the full breadth of Robinson's legacy. This is Rachel Robinson, who is the, not only his wife, a uh, lifelong uh, partner and love of his life, uh, and that was mutual. We heard the stories all the time about their being, uh, having to, when they went down south for the first time and were, were taken off the airplane and then had to go to the first spring training on the back of a bus. Jack and Rachel Robinson come from a history of African-American struggle and protest and, and standing up for, for civil rights. It was a fantastic pair. The Jackie Robinson Museum opened in 2022. Expect to see the awards, the stats, and jerseys, but also the stories off the playing field, like how Jackie, a U.S. Army lieutenant, before his baseball career, was arrested and court-martialed for refusing to move to the back of a military bus. This was 11 years before the world would know Rosa Parks, which is why Martin Luther King Jr. would later call Robinson a sit-inner before the sit-ins, a freedom rider before the freedom rides. Yet the racial taunts, the slurs, were endless. This anonymous hate letter, years into Robinson's career, threatening to lynch him if he played. Upon retiring from the game, Robinson entered the public affairs and corporate worlds. When fire hoses and police dogs were unleashed on young black people protesting racial segregation, Jackie Robinson felt the call to do something about it. I don't like these big teeth that I see on these dogs. I don't like to see the fierce expressions of the policemen in Birmingham, Alabama. And I don't like to read about pregnant women being poked in the stomach by policemen and their nightsticks. And I don't like to see young Negro kids of seven, eight, nine years old being thrown across the street by the force of a, a fire hose. But I believe that I must go down and say to the people down there, thank you for what you're doing, not only for me and my children, but I believe for America. Jackie decided he really was going to make one of his platforms on his civil rights route economic empowerment. And he often said the ballot and the buck are the two most important things for um, advancement of, of, of my community. Jackie Robinson made his last public appearance during the 1972 World Series, his one last message for baseball, to integrate the managerial ranks. He died of a heart attack 10 days later at the age of 53. 
50 years since his death, the battles against anti-blackness remain central to America's story. And the culture war has entered the classroom, where conservatives are banning the stories of Jackie Robinson and other black icons. But baseball's great experiment endures. Sometimes we fear, uh, as human beings, facing uh, a, a difficult truth. Um, but that's the only way that we're going to be able to develop a plan for moving forward as one nation is if we honestly uh, uh, deal with uh, African-American history. Those are all, um, as you say, truths that we have to deal with. Those truths are black history, which is American history, to be studied, celebrated, and preserved. And that is perhaps the key message of the great museum he and Rachel built. Thanks so much to Della Britton and all of the team at the Jackie Robinson Museum, David Robinson, Rachel Robinson, and big ups to Kai Ma, the amazing producer of that segment and the awesome crew who shot that package. Thank you all. And